What's up? What's up, Facebook? Hey, I hope you guys have an awesome freaking Monday. This is the last Monday in April. Can you believe it? We're actually getting ready to go into May. Hey, guys, I got a very special guest with me today. I got my friend Larry. And I actually, I met Larry a few months ago on Facebook. Actually, I tried to, I was reaching out to him about some business. And, uh, you know, from that, me and him got on the phone together and his com the conversation was so powerful His in his journey. You know, so I wanted to actually bring him on today where he can actually share a little bit about his journey because, guys, it doesn't matter where you start. It's all about what where, where you finish. So, Larry, yeah. if you don't mind, could you tell him what part of the country you're in and tell him a little bit about yourself? So I'm from uh, where, I'm, where I live now and where I base my business out of is Dover, Delaware. Little town in Dover, Delaware. It all started. I was actually born in Massachusetts, Holyoke, Massachusetts. And uh, my mom and my stepfather, which is my father, the only man I know, like as a father, is that man. And he was a great father, but he passed away when I was 16. I went through a lot of dark stages with it. You know, um, when he passed away, I just went to jail. I ended up getting kicked out of school. Um, I, just, I had a dark life, man, you know, as a, as a teen all the way to an adult. And what saved me was uh, when I was in jail, this guy named Richard comes up to me, tells me he wants me to set some goals. I set a couple goals. Um, my goal was to become a tattoo artist and take care of my mom. Those were the two goals like I had set in my mind, like I knew I was going to do. So I kept went back to him and I told him, I was like, Rich, that's what I'm going to do. Thank God, like being, you know, he was in there for murder, so he wasn't getting out of jail. He actually just passed away. Rest in peace because a man saved my life and doesn't even know it. He passed away last year in march so i kind of miss it because i'm going to try to speak to his son because i want to talk to his son about it because his son went to jail when he went to jail but long story short i, I want to skip all that part I'm, I'm fast forwarding a lot of things here too just so you know but i'm doing it because i want to get to the point the point is i went through a whole bunch of stuff in my life but i did set some goals and when i set them goals they were so on they were just unrealistic goals because i didn't even tattoo at the time I was tattooing with like needle and thread and Indian ink. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that's what I wanted to do. So I got out of jail. When I got out of jail, I didn't have anything to turn to. So I, I, I went to the DMV and took the CDL test and I failed it because I didn't know the air brake size. So I went back, did it again, took the test, passed, ended up getting a job driving a concrete truck for a place called Pioneer Concrete. And that's how it started. I used that and I would deliver pizzas on weekends and I was saving up my money so that way I could start tattooing and I needed to get money to get an apprenticeship. So I saved up all this money to try to get an apprenticeship with the shops, couldn't get in nowhere, ended up coming, moving back down to Dover and kept trying and trying and trying, couldn't get in anywhere. And finally I went to Rainbow Studio and I kept going in there like every week, I'd go in once a week, just talking crap, trying to get in and get in and get in. Finally, it was back. It was back after the opiates and opioids just started to come out back in the late '90s, when 2000, early 2000s, when all that stuff was becoming a pipe. I just got out of jail, so I didn't really get into any of the drug stuff that was on the streets. I was more just at the time, just drinking and just partying. So he was like, "Are you going to come to work every day?" I was like, "Yeah, I'll come to work." All of his artists at that time, just nobody showed up to work that week. So he was like, "Eff it." Come to work for me. His name is Pops, old crazy dude. Yeah. Gave me a job. Let me in the door, man. That's where it started. And uh, I didn't know shit. Didn't know what I was doing. Uh, worked there for about a year. And then the owner of the shop one day decided to show me her true colors. I was actually building a, a airbrush studio next to my house. I had a whole, I had a nice pe house on a piece of land that had like garages and stuff. Yeah. So we were building an uh, airbrush shop. And I had a construction crew at my shop, at my house working on it. The pipeline busted. The water was shooting out the whole side of my house. They called my shop like, they called the shop I worked at like 40 sometimes, called my cell phone a bunch of times. She wouldn't give them the phone. She kept saying, if this isn't about business, there's nothing I, you know, you can call them during this personal time. Wow. While my house is over here flooded, like she just showed her true colors to me. So that was like the day that I actually jumped out and took the leap of entrepreneurship. Hold on. Hold on just for a minute, Larry, because I got to slow you down, man, because I want people to understand this. You know, Larry, you you know, we talked. I've been in the network marketing industry for 17 years. Yeah. I've been building a business. And a lot of times I try to tell people, I don't care what business platform you in. I don't care what you're doing. That's why I bring people on like Larry, you know, because, guys, what? He went to, he went to jail. A guy in jail changed his life. Yes. From that guy in jail, he decided that, man, you know what? When I get out, I'm going to be a tattoo artist. When he got out, he couldn't. Would nobody give him a job doing that? So he got his CDL, fell the air break uh, part because I got CDL too. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that sounds hard, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. Went back, 
passed the test, got a job driving a concrete truck. But not only that, on the weekends, he was delivering pizza because he wanted to get the cash flow where he can actually become a tattoo artist. He went to several places. Nobody wanted to give him opportunity. He found one place. He was persistent. He kept going every weekend, every week, every week, every week. And then he got his opportunity. When he got his opportunity, he seized the moment. See, Larry, that's so powerful, man. You never shared that part with me. And the reason why I said it's so powerful, Larry, so many people give up too soon. Mm -hmm. They might not even have the story that you had in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? They just regular people, never been in trouble. And the first challenge they run into, the first person that tell them no, they freaking quit. They don't understand. Yeah. So go on and complete the story, Larry. I had to just go recap that and so they can truly understand the power in that. And the crazy part about it is I had a son that was just born at that time too. Isaac, my oldest, he's actually here now. Um, so when I, when I decided the next day, I, I didn't do it that day. I didn't quit or anything. I just was like real irritated. I left. I told my last client I wasn't tattooing him. I, she gave me a whole bunch of crap about that. I was like, look, I'm going home. I got to take care of my problem. Now, I don't even know what's going on at my house. Because, you know, back then we didn't really have like iPhones. We take a picture and see stuff then. Yep. It was a little, it was, we're talking some years ago almost 19 now 18 years ago so um i get to my house everything's cool i'm sitting there talking to my ex-wife and my and i'm just sitting there thinking like man do i really want to work for somebody that doesn't even care about me at all or would i rather just jump out the window and just do it myself now at the time that sounded like a great idea bad part was i didn't know really what i was doing i didn't know the industry well enough to get into it but i did it and i took the step forward and i just pushed right and uh i stayed open for about Low over, low over, almost two years, I was open. I opened up my own tattoo studio through Hell and yeah. High Water. I made it happen, and I opened up. And because I did save up my money, one thing I do do is I, I, I invest my money right back into myself. Anything I'm, I know I want to do or know I'm going to do, I do it, and I give it all I got. So that's what I did. And two years go by, I ended up getting broke into by some people because I used to let people hang out at the shop all the time. And tattoo shops are not hangout spots, just by the way. But that's what I did back then. Like, everybody would come hang out. We'd chill. And uh, two of the guys used to come in here every day ended up robbing me. And wow. when they robbed me, they took all the stuff out of the shop. And then that wasn't even the worst blow. That was, like, a part of the blow. Then the next blow was I found out my wife was cheating on me and my best friend that was renting one of my buildings out back from me. So I had to deal with that situation. It was just like... If, if anything and everything could happen to you at a moment, that was that moment. Like, I ended up having to claim bankruptcy because my my house was in my name and my wife was living there. And I got kicked out of it because I allowed her to stay there while I was going through the divorce because we had a son together and I wanted it to be responsible. Well, she ended up getting an abandonment, so I didn't even get the house. Like, I didn't get to keep the house or nothing. Like, it was just like, if you could pick something, everything happened, dude. And it was like one thing after another, after another, after another. I ended up moving back in with my mom, had nothing, had to go resort back to driving Pioneer Concrete again. So I did. <laughs> but I knew I wasn't going to stay there. I, I, When I went back, I told Ben, I was like, Ben, I'm not staying here. Even though y'all pay me good and I get hours I need or whatever to make some money, this isn't what I want to do with my life and this isn't what I'm going to do with my life. So I worked there for about a year, saved up the money, ended up seeing a spot in Smyrna for rent, got it, opened up another shop. When I opened up that studio, going great again, man. It was like a two-year glitch. I don't know what was going on, but it happened again. Two years later, um, no, no woman cheating on me or nothing at this time. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> chilling, right? And uh, it was me and my son, and we're sitting at the counter table and we're eating. Every morning we come in, we eat breakfast, right? We always ate our breakfast at the counter because we get our breakfast and we bring it there. So we're sitting there, and uh, Board of Health comes in. The guy sold the building on me, right? So I fast forward a little bit, but I'm going to tell you the story. The guy sold the building that I was renting from to another company. Mm -hmm. The company that bought it wanted everybody out so they can cut the whole building up, remodel the whole thing. With me being in there, I was in the way. Mm -hmm. I understood that. I didn't want to hear that, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have any money saved up because I was partying like crazy, going out every night, buying mm -hmm. clothes all the time. Like I was just spending my money as quick as I can get it. So Board of Health Inspector mm -hmm. comes in. The people that I was renting from, took and cut the bathroom wall out <laughs> called the state of state board of health company mm -hmm. and said i am running a tattoo studio illegally with a no bathroom because you have to have a bathroom with sinks so i was like no way no no way yeah he comes in he tells his story we go back to the bathroom because he's like he didn't tell me the wall was cut out he just told me that i didn't have a proper bathroom this was an old church 
This thing had nice bathrooms. So I'm like, there's no way. Man, we walk in a bathroom and you could see the apartment in the back. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to say. You know, what am I going to say? I don't know what the hell. I don't even know how this happened. It, yeah. you know, it took a second for me to bring it all in. And I told him, I was like, man, just give me the day. Let me close down for the day and I'll put the wall back up to a temporary wall that will have some drywall. I won't finish it because I can't. I can't do that right now. I can't afford to do all this. Blah, blah. He was like, nope, it has to be 100% finished. So, needless to say, I didn't have the money to move anywhere else. I didn't have the money for anything. So, I pretty much lost everything again. So, this time I was living with uh, friends of mine, a couple friends of mine, Thomas Hill, Brad, Kenny, and them. We all lived in a, a house together with me and my son and them. I had the master bedroom because I had a kid. And my son had his own bedroom, and then we split the other two rooms. So we made it work, right? And uh, if it wasn't for them at that time, man, when that happened, I was like tour, dude. I was broke, didn't have any money. Me and Brad were sharing dollar menus, riding late night while Pharrell watched my son, while we went out and just talked. Like we would just literally ride down the road and just talk because we were so depressed. And uh, that brought me through a lot of things. And then one day, it was like a sign. I got with this chick, my ex-wife now, we got married, or we ended up having a kid. We got together, ended up having a kid. I was working at Dover Gym at this time. And, uh, I mean, not Dover Gym. I don't know why I said that. That's just a friend of mine's gym. I worked for Gold's Gym at the time. And uh, I, I ended up getting fired from there. Now I got another kid on the way. I had no income. I had $500 in my name. And then my buddy goes, hey, there's a, there's a building coming available. It's a prime location in Dover. He's like, you should check it out. I was like, all right, where's that? He goes right on the highway, and, it, and where it's at is, like, dead center of the city. Like, it's in the center of the city, and no other tattoo shops were around. Nobody wanted to pay the rents out here. Nobody wanted to do any of that. So I had no money. I had nothing to lose, right? So I'm over here like, okay, let me figure some out. I got somebody that was willing to invest in me and wanted to become a partner. I was like, okay. So at that time, though, I didn't know no better, but now I know in business, he was opening his – he he was relocating his business so he really just didn't invest with me and come with me because of that fact. So I want to put that out there first because I don't believe he's a bad dude. I think it was just bad timing because if it would have yeah. happened, he probably would have done it if he'd done it now. So anyway, the day of the lease that we're supposed to sign a lease to get in this spot, he never shows up. Never once. So I'm like, oh, man, what the hell? Right? So like, I was like, you know, we're sitting there awkward. It's awkward because I'm sitting there with them. They're sitting there with me. I'm trying to get a hold of them. They try to get a hold of them. They're looking at me for an answer. I don't even have the money to give them because, you know, I need to secure deposit, down payment, all this. Like, I don't have any of this. I don't have nothing to give you. Yeah. I got $500 in the savings account that I'm eventually going to need because I'm, I got one check coming and a little bit of unemployment. I don't have no money coming. My wife already quit her job because she's a hairstylist and she was pregnant and she was having a hard time. So it was like a lot of stuff going on. So finally, after like three weeks of negotiations, because now they're like scared to do any business with me because I don't have an investor. I already told them I don't have the finances. I told them the guy was still in the building, renting a building. He was going to be out January 1st. I was like, let me sign you a lease. I'm going to give you this last $500 I have in a check. I said, and it come January 1st, I don't have the finances to move forward. You keep the $500 and I'll just go on my way. But that's all I can do for you because I don't have anything else to give you. But I'm giving you my word. I'm going to make this work. She was like, Har Harold looked at me and goes, you know what? I'm going to give you a chance. And this was in a recession. This was in 2008 when we had the recession. So, you know, times was tough. And people were willing to do certain things because they didn't have options, too. You know, so he jumped on board. He allowed me. I went home. I'm driving home, and I'm looking like, dude, I just gave up my last $500. And I don't even know how I'm about to make this happen. I didn't. I didn't have no – man, I knew nothing. So I go home, and I had a computer that a friend had given me. And I'm looking at it like, I don't need it, right? I don't need this. I don't need this iPhone I got. I don't need any of this stuff. So I put it on Craigslist, sold the, sold the computer, went out, got a Civic, traded that, or sold that, took that money, bought this little beat-up Civic. It really wasn't bad running car. It was just ugly. It needed yeah. a lot of cleaning. Cleat the hell out of it. Ended up almost quadrupling my money. I got $2,500 for it. Took that, kept flipping it. Next thing you know, I started putting money away, started putting money away, started putting money away. And by the time January came, I had enough money to get going. I didn't have all the money, but I had quite a bit. So I got a lot done. 
So that's how that started. And then when I opened up, so the day before I was supposed to open up, now mind you, and this is 2009 now, we're talking, or 2008, late 2008, City of Dover went through this problem we had where a building had got condemned for asbestos and it was falling back on the city, the inspectors, right? So permits and stuff like that was like fine tooth comb. Like everything had to be perfect. So it was a lot of work and you waited forever for permits. So the guy's name was Greg Akers. Good guy. He was just going through a lot at the time. He ended up getting all the way to the end. He comes in for my final inspection and he looks at a wall that I did nothing to, man. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But threw some paint on it. That was it. I did yeah, nothing yeah. in this wall. He looks at me and goes, is that a doorway? I was like, man, I don't know. I was like, I I don't know. I ain't do nothing to that wall. All I know is it's painted that color. That's it. He goes over, got his long screwdriver, pokes a hole through it, and you can see the store next door. And he's like, you can't open. I done yeah. sold everything I had. The car I was driving, I sold. I was riding a 10-speed bike to work because I don't even have anything at this point. My, my ex-wife, my wife at the time, had a car, so I would use that every once in a while, but she needed it too. So it was like, you know, I just made it work. I compromised situations. So... I'm looking at him. I'm like, dude, you, what do you mean? Like, I got all the way here, man. I can't even, I don't have anything left. So I ended up calling Harold again, the owner. And I was like, listen, I'm almost in tears, man. Grown ass man, almost in tears over this. And I was like, I can't, I can't open the shop, man. He goes, why? I was like, because there's a wall that's not separated with fire, a firewall. And he won't let you do drywall. He wants brick because it's a brick building. Harold goes, Larry, I'll take care of it. That was the best feeling I ever had in my life. Now, mind you, it was still was a hard time because it was still two months, right? Yeah. So we already had, I already ran advertising that I could and the papers and everything else. I'm broke. I don't have any more money to, to put out anything else saying, oh, we're going to be reopening in two weeks instead. Facebook had just started. It really wasn't a thing yet. Facebook really didn't start popping until around 2009 when it really started getting real heavy. Yeah. So it's not like I had the reach I would have been able to do now with what I had. So... Lo and behold, two weeks go by, man, the day we opened the door, we couldn't keep the door shut. And the door just kept going. So we pushed through a lot, man. I pushed through a lot of stuff. Mine and, like, I had a son that I was taking care of that was, you know, my oldest son. I had a new daughter. I'm broke. I'm trying to figure life out. I'm, you know, scraping up change just to get just to get milk, man. It was a rough time. But well, I you know, the, thing, work. the huh? thing about it, Larry, and that's what people need to hear, man, that journey is not easy. No, I mean, no, it's no. about, you know, how bad do you want it? What are you willing to go through to make your dreams become reality? I mean, oh, now you got your shop, your business is booming, you're doing podcasts. I mean, I see you on Facebook, you're making an impact in other people's lives. I mean, uh, you got people working for you. I mean, that's that's big time, man. But, you know, now when people see you that what they see is Larry now, but they don't yeah. know nothing about the story, the challenges, the adversity, you know, losing two shops, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, getting to the point where you didn't have no money, riding a bicycle, to, you know, to work and stuff like yeah. that. They don't understand that. And it's a price that you got to pay for success. So I hope, you know, whoever sees this, you know, I really hope that it help you out in some kind of way to let you know that you got to go through the process. You got to pay the price in order to get to where you want to get. So, yeah. uh, yeah, so man, I mean, I'm really proud of you, bro. That's why we click. You know, when I when I talked to you, I saw that like, man, you know what? This guy right here been through a lot, but now he's living his dream, and he didn't give up because it's so easy to give up. Maybe, maybe you know, somebody that's looking at this, maybe your journey started not so well. Maybe you ended up in jail or in prison or something like that, and you got a dream inside of you. You know, maybe you know just from hearing Larry's story, that inspires you to go after your dream with everything that you got, because this is a powerful story, which is a powerful man that went through so much adversity, so much, so many life challenges, and now look at him. I mean, so tell us about what's going on now, Larry. I know you got the billionaire podcast, man. I mean, you, you so business is going on. Fast forward 20 years from all the drama to the good stuff. And I still, you know, you still have your trials and tribulations in any day in business. I was shut down for four months last year. So it is what it is, you know, for the whole COVID. Uh, we're still at 30% capacity. But what the good positives behind all that is, while COVID hit, I ended up training a girl to a tattoo, 18, straight out of high school. She's now an amazing artist, being booked all over the world, doing her thing, right? So... What I've done now, what I'm doing now is I, for one, you know, I still tattoo, but I only do that a couple days a week. And I only do that for certain clientele because what I do for my tattooing, and I'll explain this to you, 
I don't take a tattoo for the art of what you bring me. I tattoo you from the story you tell me. You, we come in, we have a long conversation about your life, what you're trying to go through. Because in life, there's three things you go through, right? You, when you're going through death, breakups, or everything, you got your first, your you know, re- denial, your regrets. You got you got all these emotions running through your body. But at the end of the day, you need closure, you need acceptance, and you need to be, you know, you need to have your um, time of joy for you, right? So that's what I do. You come in, you tell me a story. And I put art to it and I tell you the story behind the art, like why I picked this, why I did this, what this is for. And I tell a story. So because my tattoos are for more meaningful tattoos for that reason. Like, I want you to live with this story for the rest of your life so you can tell your grandkids about this. Like, wow. so they because because what you're doing is what I'm doing ultimately is like helping you write a book. So that way, when your kids come up, like I'm writing a book right now, right, called Billionaire Mindset. The reason why I'm writing it is so my children's children children can read this book and if they're going through something in life they can see that i've went through it and they can see that if i've went through this at this point they can get through it too and i'm encouraging my son to write a book too and he is writing a book too so that way when he gets older and he his kids get older you know he has kids and he has kids of his own they can read about the stories that his dad never talked about right because there's a lot in this book that i didn't talk about with my kids so they wow. can see what I've went through and they can live, you know, they can, they can see that anything can happen because that's where I'm at in my life. But what I do have going on, I'm sorry, I went off topic. Oh, that's but fine. What I have is I have the tattoo company. I also opened up a tattoo supply company during last year around March. And I opened that up to be about the artist, right? Because what I'm seeing is the industry is getting crazy pricing, but they're not, it's not about the artist. It's just about the money. Like the products aren't as good as they used to be. You go back to an old coil machine, which is a metal hitting metal contacted through electricity and the machines would run great. And you'd spend 250 bucks, 500 bucks, something like that for a good one. Now you're spending a thousand dollars for something that breaks in 90 days. So it's just, it's not for the artists and that's what I want to get it back to. So I work with a lot of different companies and manufacturers and, um, engineers and everything we've been working for the last couple of years now on trying to find the right machine for the right artist for one for line work one for color artists one for shading artists that's what i'm working on right now and i wanted out a powerpoint presentation price wise for the artists not for my pockets because at the end of the day i'm good i make enough money i can i own enough stuff where it's not about the money to me anymore it's just showing people that they can do it too right then i have the billionaire mindset podcast that obviously you talked about it's in the background and i have the billionaire mindset book what and is i the mentor book, is the book already out larry nope i am not writing it i'm not finishing it until this chapter's over i'm okay. in the middle of the biggest growth of my career and i want to put this in the, on this book because it's a billionaire mindset the billionaire mindset really wasn't built till 2019 so the billionaire mindset podcast wasn't built till 2020 or not 19 maybe in, yeah the beginning of 2020. But what I wanted is it's a whole movement and I want everybody to see how I did it and what it took. So that way anybody wanting to do it can really do this because building a podcast isn't really anything other than some time, right? You know that. So um, I just want to show people, show how they can get their story out there, show people that you can do this no matter where you come from, what you've done, where you've been. That's, that's what my movement's about. It's about just showing positivity growth and mindsets that it takes a mindset to get to there you can't you know, just get there by doing you got to get there by knowing you know one of the things that that's one of the things that really attracted me to you larry i don't even know if you noticed but i started kind of following your facebooks your lives and i saw that you really cared about people and you want to inspire people that's yeah. why you know guys in, anybody know me larry i'm in network marketing bro i build sales teams that's what it's all about to me making an impact yeah. in other people's lives showing people how they can live the be- live a better life, but just be a better person overall, and not only their self live a better life, make an impact in other people's lives. So when I ran across you, that just kind of resonated with me. And then I heard some of your story, and you know, you said you had too much going on to actually partner up with me, but I heard some of your story, and I was like, man, I got to get you on on a Facebook Live where we share this story because I know this story can make an impact in other people's lives. So Larry, mm-hmm. we're gonna wrap this up, brother. If you can leave somebody one tip that you know might have started their journey like yours. And, you know, just something to maybe inspire them to keep going because they might be going through some challenges in adversity right now. What 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 would that tip be? Biggest tip I can give you is never give up because, and you've heard this a million times, and this is this is facts. Your, your future you will thank you. Dude, all the stuff I've been through, right, 
I, I could have quit. And I don't know why I didn't. Honestly, some of the stuff, I should have just changed directions. I should have went somewhere else, right? Because that's in my, my mind. That's what I was thinking. But I didn't do that. So that's what I would tell you is like, listen, if you want it bad enough, you got to want it like like all all the greats say. You know, they all got their own saying. I'm not going to start shouting out a bunch of names because there's a bunch of people with a whole bunch of them, right? Yeah. But if you want to go most relevant that I can think of is Eric Thomas. If you want it bad enough as you want to breathe, you can succeed, right? It's the truth. Like, don't give up on yourself. Do not give up on yourself. Don't even think about giving up. Think about what you got to do to get to the next step. Like, if you have a setback, that's a setback for what? A setup for a failure. A failure is a setup for a success or something, a comeback, right? Yeah. So look at it like that because – when when I was going through stuff and I failed at something, I didn't let the failure stop me. I just let the failure teach me what I don't want, what I shouldn't do, right? That's what you got to figure out. And if it comes to the finances side of it, we all have financial issues, man. There's no, I'm not financially where I want to be to where I want to be yet, but it's coming. The money comes tenfold. I don't, I just wait, I just work, keep moving forward. And eventually the money just comes, right? Because somebody's going to see something in you. You're going to see something. You're going to realize how to get money is easier than you think it is, right? But you just got to have the drive and the will and the, and the showing somebody that that's what you're trying to do. You show a direction, right? So don't give up on yourself. Show a direction and keep moving forward. And never give up. Never give up. Keep a that's, mindset of never giving up. That's powerful, guys. And that is true. Never get up. Give up. You got to keep grinding, man. You got to keep showing up every day, day in and day out. And I guarantee you, if you keep showing up day in and day out, man, I like I always tell you, man, God has people already lined up for you, but you got to show up in order for them people to come in your life. Otherwise, they'll never find you. With and that then, guy, yep. go ahead, And they'll, you'll never know. Man, the people I have in, in my life now, I would have never known in a million years they'd be in my life. One of them hit me with a car. That's how I met him. Just I was at a business meeting for a different company with a different person, and I met a man, a billionaire, that just almost hit me with his car. It didn't know me from a can of paint. And now we're good friends and have conversations. Nothing about money. Nothing about that. I just I talk to him about experiences and knowledge because that's what it should be. It shouldn't be about money with somebody, man. Get what you want from that person. That's the knowledge and the wisdom that they can give you. Because then you can turn that into whatever. And you can make an impact in other people's lives. Just whatever. like that person. Just like that person sowing in your life, he give me the opportunity to make impact where you can sow in somebody else's life. Yeah. Hey, man, with that, Larry, bro, I really want to thank you for taking the time out to do this for me. You know, to share this with these, uh, with whoever is watching this. I know for a fact that it's going to make an impact in several people's lives. And with that, if you saw this today, let's make this an awesome week. This is a, actually the freaking last Monday in April, guys. We're going into May 2021. You All can right. still accomplish whatever your goals is. You just got to go for it. You heard Larry's story. Never give up. Keep going. Yep. It's all possible. With that, God bless. You guys have an awesome week. Hold on, Larry. What's going on? Bro, that was a powerful story. You Thank never.